We're back! Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, goblins of all ages, welcome back to another edition and its regular scheduled programming of the greatest goddamn D&D stream in this world and the next here. Welcome to Goblins Under the Stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got Carlos Garcia, a.k.a. the nastiest captain in all the land, Rampoo McNasty. And of course, I ain't here alone because I come here with my epic crew of stone drinkers. Ho, oh, ho! Oh. You got Laxton Abershard. You got Manta Zermeister. You got Crick, Crick, Crick. And of course, to meet us upon this adventure, the greatest goddamn d and DM of the land here, it's Nate Gonzalez! Take it away, dude! Thank you so much, Mr. McNasty, and welcome back, everyone, to our regularly scheduled programming Sunday night, Goblins Under the Stairs, back at it live. Give you guys a quick little recap of what happened the last time on our shorty, uh, and what has led us up to this point, and then we'll jump back into this thing, we're a couple minutes behind where we wanted to start, so let's make it quick, and let's get going. Uh, driven from a coastal settlement of uh, Luskin by the gigantic crystalline vines, astral blights, and earthquakes, you guys secured passage aboard the Moon Dancer, uh, galleon under the command of Captain Elena Sartell, and the ship rocketed into space. And from that point, you guys ran into uh, some astral elves. Um, after escaping your endangered world from the help of Captain Sartell, of course, and her ship, the Moon Dancer, uh, you guys ran into these astral elves aboard their um, ship called the uh, Dark Stars, a star moth kind of ship. And after surviving uh, your first wild space encounter, uh, you guys were able to capture one of these astral elves, ask them a bit of questions, learn that uh, they were the ones responsible for uh, causing this blight on your guys' home planet of Toral. And um, after this, you guys have uh, resumed your voyage onto the Rocker Brawl, where Captain Alina Sartell mentioned that uh, Commander Crux, a GIF or a GIF, uh, not quite sure how to pronounce it, um, there will be able to help you guys forward with uh, a little bit more inquiries on these Astral Elves and uh, other such things. But along the way, after waking up after a long rest, uh, you guys made a terrifying discovery. There was a Mind Flayer ship lurking among some asteroids. This is where we will be picking it up as you guys all make your way out to the top deck to, you know, be floating around in the astral sea, see these rocks and debris floating around you guys, and out from behind one of them comes this nautilus-shaped vessel and drifts closer and closer, and as Captain Alina Sartell has her spyglass out, you see her, but out a sigh of relief, she says, ah, it's just a derelict. The, so it's abandoned? Uh, she kind of points it out, you know, points out all the stripped away weaponry and the broken hull of it. I mean, if there were any mind flayers aboard, uh, they, they would have attacked us by now. Uh, it does look like someone's picked it over already. Uh, you see her get like a little smirk, but still, there might be something more salvaging. I'm in. I look over at Manto. Uh, it sounds like you're calling there, buddy. Well, if you insist. I'm glad you were on the same page as myself. Hey, we might also be able to find some ingredients for Crick to chef up some more stuff. I nod towards Crick and see if he's interested, you know, for, Je for Flapjack. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at Flapjack, just completely void of anything, and look back <laughs> at the group. And, and then um, I kind of pull out the astral egg and... Um, I mentioned to her, we found this on something that looked suspiciously like that on Toral. Any connections? Ah, uh, this kind of looks at you. You know, that's uh, strange that you would find one of these down on Toral. It's not like very often that uh, the Mind Flayers make their way on down there. Um, I mean, must have had to make some sort of emergency landing or stop of sorts, but. Uh, you know, mind flayers, they, they fly these ships all around and, uh, slave about. Maybe there's some sort of connection, but I don't think we'd know until we get a little bit closer, maybe. Well, maybe we should get a little closer, maybe. 
says this, uh, you hear Flapjack kind of pipe up in the back. Uh, Captain, I don't mean to overstep my boundaries or anything, but uh, something isn't sitting right about this with me. While he's saying that, Crick loudly says again in the middle of his conversation, we should get closer, maybe. Uh, I agree with you, Crick. Uh, but Flapjack, are, are you saying you're sensing something? You seem kind of like feel inwards as um, it's like yeah, my my telepathy is it's given it's given a vague sense of something aboard, but uh, I don't know. It might it's kind of confusing. Like the wires are getting crossed. Hmm. How far are we? Uh, from the ship. Yeah. Like um, how far from like where we are here to the floating ship that's interfering with Flapjack? Um, maybe... I don't know, you guys are floating, like, in the same vicinity. Uh, maybe, like, 200 feet or so. 300 feet. Okay. Um... Hmm. Probably a little far. Could I do, like, just a general arcana check? Just to see if I could, like, detect anything that might be interfering, if there's anything coming from the ship? Yeah, how, how would you go about detecting that? Um, sort of just, like, channeling my scarf, because, you know, I kind of am holy-ish man um just being like am i getting any type of sense of like what might be interfering with flapjack any remnants of evil anything at all yeah it, sure well yeah while he's doing that can i help by like i want to take out my cartography tools and you know like there's stars obviously behind it but see if like any light is being like refracted at a weird angle like there's some force field or aura emanating around it Gotcha, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and make a make our arcana check. Uh, you can make this right. uh, with advantage. All right, so twenty six on the first 26. go. Six. <laughs> and twenty five on the second. Twenty six. So twenty six. Twenty five. Very nice. Yeah, as you're going out and trying to sense like whatever flatjack seems to be picking up from this as well. Uh, you watching this derelict ship just kind of float out there. For whatever reason just don't seem to feel like there's anything that, like, you know, what Flapjack is saying, you know, you, you take his word of caution and everything, but you don't seem to sense any sort of, like, arcane nature. In fact, the ship seems like it's, you know, it's usually, like, these Nautiloid ships are almost living kind of beings. Uh, you know, there seems to be no life at all to it. Huh. Flapjack, you sure you're getting something? I'm not getting an ounce of response from anything. I mean, I don't know. It could be weird with the way the the psionics of of the mind flayers and the and the way their ships are set up could be interfering, and the way that's you know broken down. But I don't know. Um, usually, my senses haven't left me led me wrong before. Captain yeah, Sartell kind of well, chimes in. Look, Flapjack, I appreciate your you know being worried and looking out for us, but uh, we see a ship here. We could use some parts. I say we go on and check it out. You know, uh, the rest of us, since we no longer have a home, could use some supplies as well. So, uh, I vote we also board and we try to focus on finding anything related to health or making sure that we're okay in case we are clearly going to have future battles coming for our last, I don't know, hour in this new world that has been any indication. <laughs> yeah, we should just make sure we move forward with a little bit of caution on this. Gosh. It will fall. Langston well, his you would just walk around the other side, but it's, it's not that. So that's how it works for you, huh? <laughs> Langston so is fully disengaged and staring six. off the side of the ship. <laughs> no, okay, and the gravity it pulls that's you not, towards no, the middle. No, no. <laughs> I mean, the way, the way that he's described